Okay, <clears throat> this is something that I get not too often, but this is a pair of cylinder heads that was ported by a porting service, I believe in um, Chatsworth, California. I'm not sure, but these belong to a customer out there, Bob Imhoff, and he sent me these a while back, and they have been ported and gone through, but he was suspect to them as... You know, he didn't think that they were ported the way that he wanted, but they looked impressive at first. But when he sent them to me and I called him back, what I told him was they had done a, a fairly decent job on the combustion chambers. It's hard to tell now because I blasted the head, cleaned it up, and brought it to the back to the original paint or the original gray iron. And... Uh, Basically, here's what they done. They, they shoved a 202-160 in it. They spent quite a amount of time on the combustion chambers, unshrouding them, and uh, they went through them. Mainly, they just polished them. The, um, I guess what got him alerted was he could see the casting lines in the head, which is a good indicator that not a lot was done. So, while they done the combustion chambers, and they had it looking kind of pretty on the exhaust, Virtually inside the ports, nothing was done. They did pour aluminum in the crossovers. It's been cut for screw-in studs and guide plates. And what makes this really an unusual case is that these are going on, a, I believe, a 78 or 79 Corvette. And he's got the ram horn exhaust manifolds on it, and he's keeping the factory iron intake. He's wanting to keep it close to a factory uh, stock deal. Wait a minute, excuse me, I believe it's a 70 model L, uh, Corvette, and that's probably what it is. I'll have to go back and ask him for sure, but I know he wanted to keep it matching numbers and parts correct, but he wanted the power out of it. Well, having cast iron manifolds, even though it's got the, uh, the famous ram horns, there's still a lot that can be done, but now enlarging them really big is not going to help this head because it will choke. What we're going to want with this head is a trick that I do to round track heads, which is a lot of CFM, a lot of airflow without a super big port. Um, so what we're going to do in this deal, without making it super big, we are going to uh, probably run the tubes in it and move the entrances a little bit and mainly just reshape the bowls where they went in there and, and cut it for the 202-160s, and that's it. But, I mean, that, that entails a lot of work, but it should sure make quite a package. I think they rated these at uh, 370 horsepower. Uh, I can assure you that these are going to make quite a bit more than that. So we're going to start in, in, in a place in the beginning that this is when I do one of these, I get this out of the way first. It's called detailing. We are going to pump the heads also uh, because they are an older head. Uh, when it's a head like this, I do suggest that the heads get pumped, which is where I put the epoxy coating in the water jackets of the, of the head so that uh, any future water antifreeze circulating through the ports doesn't keep eroding away at it because you got to really watch that on these things. Uh, on a new set of heads, I could probably hit them and take them out a lot more than what I would. But on these right here, uh, the areas I'm taking the meat out the heavily, I'm going to be safe. And at the same time, it's beneficial to the fact that we can't have a super high volume port. We want flow numbers. Alright, so anyway, uh, we're going to start. And I'm going to get in here with you and show you how I set up detailing the head. Remember, it ain't just porting the head and doing the valve job. As I've always mentioned in my videos, it is attention to detail. Um, let's start first with how I clean up the water jackets because i got to clean the water jackets, clean the oil patches, get all that stuff straightened out, and then I'm going to pump the head. All right, and then we'll get into the porting after that's done and paint it. Whenever I paint them, I do so by putting it on my kerosene heater and heating the head up to around 200 degrees and shooting the paint on it because, man, you can't beat it. When you do that to it, it uh, it's ultimately stays that way. Now, I put a base primer coat on it 
because I never know what the customer is going to want to paint it and this primer coat serves as a good basis for the customer to paint the head whatever color they want to. Alright, so let's begin by doing the water passages first. Basically when I say do the water passage, this is what I'm referring to. Notice how from the factory it's not quite a square. Okay, now uh, straight here then curved here. What I do is I take the gasket that I'm going to use which in this case on the entrance is going to be a 1205 Felpro and of course I, I go ahead I dock them in the areas they had already ported this to the standard blue stripe on the on the intake ports over here but let's take a look at this okay you can see uh, how much can be moved and I mean a lot of people say well, why would you fool with that for it's real simple this is coolant I mean it's just like airflow by going in there cutting that out straighten it out we're going to leave a better path for the water to flow through the head and come out I also go underneath it with I'm going to show you and I cut all that meat out anything that could obstruct flow into the water and I also have a little trick I do with the drill bits. I do this to all of my heads. Every single one of them have this treatment where I open up the water passages, clear all that out, and, and straighten that because it's very important that the head cool itself, especially when you're getting the kind of power out of them that we get out of them here at Head Bites. So let's go ahead and do the detail work first, get this out of the way, and begin the pumping and the painting and the priming. And we start by going ahead and just like you would an intake port and you scribe the water jackets okay like I said this all has to be done of course before the pumping so I'm gonna go ahead now as you see and I'm gonna uh, scribe all of them and get this locked in so we can paint and pump and all that. I'll go ahead and finish that, then we'll turn it over and I'll show you what I do on the water ports. Okay, as you can see, I got it scribed in the dockum. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna go ahead and get my grinder ready. We're gonna start with a finger first, pull in this side and then hit it with the uh, a bigger egg and roll all this area and get me a nice smooth transition for that water to come swooshing in there, rotate around the head and, and just do a better job of display of absorbing heat, taking it out and getting it out of there. Okay. Okay. Let's open this turkey up some. much treat it just like I would a um, an intake port like I said I, I go in there and make what I call my little baby clover leaf now I'll come in there with a big egg and straighten it up uh, so I'm gonna go ahead now and complete them on all the rest of them and I'll show you what they look like and then we'll switch to the big egg okay now I just wanted to show you I completed my little bit of trench and straightening them water ports out and uh, usually I'd go ahead and switch to the egg, but while I got my famous finger burr on there, let's roll the heads over and let's take a look at what a mess Jim gave us from the factory. And sometimes it's bad and sometimes it's worse. Let me get set up. This is what I'm referring to right here. If we can zoom in there a little bit, see all this casting flash and overhang and I'll be showing you when I'm when I'm doing a few of them plus there's something else there's a hole right here and you wouldn't believe how often they're clogged so I get a drill bit that's properly sized and shoot through each one of them water holes because I mean you wouldn't believe how often just casting from the factory they're clogged up or inoperable man you get two or three things like that some of these casting overhang flashes in there and it just you know that's how reason some cars run hotter and cooler than the others is little things like that so let's go in here and let's destroy that stuff
All right, now I'm going to go on down the line here. Here's another one. 